Okay, this is the first video we've done in a while. And we're gonna read a book. This time, we're gonna read it on the Kindle. Among the Farmyard People. The Project Gutenberg Among the Farmyard People by Clara Billingham Pearson. Illustrated by F. C. Gordon. See, and there's a picture. See the picture? Okay. See. This book is copyright free. Okay. Clara Dillingham Pearson, author of Among the Meadow People and the and Forest People. So the introduction to the children. Dear little friends, I want to introduce the farmyard people to you and to have you call upon them and become better acquainted as soon as you can. Some of them are working for us and we surely should know them. Perhaps, too, some of us are working for them, since that is the way in this delightful world of ours and one of the happiest parts of life is helping and being helped. It is so in the farmyard. And although there is not much work that people there can do for each other, there are many kind things to be said, and even the lame duckling found that he could make the blind horse happy when he tried. It is there as it is everywhere else, and I sometimes think that although the farmyard people do not look like us or talk like us, they are not so very different after all. If you had seen the little chicken who wouldn't travel when his mother was reproving him, you could not have helped knowing his thoughts, even if you did not understand a word of the, chicken, of the chicken language. He was thinking, I don't care, I don't care a bit, so now. That was long since, for he was a chicken when I was a little girl, and both of us grew up some time ago. I think I have always been more sorry for him, because when he was learning to eat gravel, I was learning to eat some things which I did not like. And so, you see, I knew exactly how he felt, but it was not until afterwards that I found out how this mother felt. That is one of the stories which I have been keeping a long time to you, and the chicken was a particular friend of mine. I knew him better than I did some of his neighbors, yet they were all pleasant acquaintances, and if I did not see some of these things happen with my own eyes, it is just because I was not in the farmyard at the right time. There are many other tales I should like to tell you about them, but one mustn't make the book too fat and heavy for your hands to hold, so I will send you these and keep the rest. They will be it on a Kindle, so it's not going to be fat or heavy, is it? Many stories might be told about our neighbors who live out of doors, and they are stories that ought to be told, too, for there are still boys and girls who do not know that animals think and talk and work, and love their babies and help each other when in trouble. I knew one boy who really thought it was not wrong to steal newly built birds' nests. And I have seen girls, quite large ones too, who were afraid of mice. It was only last winter that a quail came to my front door during the very cold weather and snuggled down into the warmest corner he could find. I fed him, and he stayed there for several days. And I know, and knew them perfectly well that although he did not say it in so many words, he came to remind me that I had not yet told you a quail story. And two of my little neighbors brought ten polywogs to spend the day with me, so I promised then and there that the next book should be about pond people and have a polywog story in it. And now, goodbye. Perhaps some of you will write me about your visits to the farmyard. I hope you will enjoy them very much, but be sure you don't wear red dresses or, capes, or caps when you call on the turkey goblin. Your friend, Clara Dillingham Pearson, Stanton, Michigan, March 28, 1899. What do you think of that? Well, that's all I'm going to read for right now. But what do you think about where she lived? Where, where is that? See the word? Michigan? Yeah, well, I... Yeah. In the 
in the book they live there too and they live on a farm in the book and you live on a farm <laughs> Mama, can you play Nemo? No.